Well, the Conservative MP Chris Philp has been campaigning on this, backing a crackdown on fixed-term betting terminals, and he joins me now. Uh, are you satisfied with these proposals as announced? Well, I'm very pleased they've published the consultation. They're proposing to limit the maximum bet on a fixed odd betting terminal to between two and fifty pounds. But I very much hope it comes in at two pounds. I still think fifty pounds would be a great deal too high because at fifty pounds you could still lose hundreds of pounds in a matter of well, a few would minutes. Would it actually limit the amount you could use? Because presumably you could just go on doing it. Well, obviously, yeah. If somebody spent sort of six hours um, putting two pounds a go, and you could cumulatively lose a lot. But clearly, if you limit the amount per go, it will be a big step in the right direction. And what really concerns me is that it's often the most vulnerable people in society, uh, people on low incomes, people who are hoping for the big win that will transform their lives, people even with mental health problems who get most addicted to these terrible machines. In some cases, you know, they lose their livelihoods, their house. Uh, there was a man I spoke to earlier today who, uh, you know, his marriage had broken up and he'd lost his children as a result. So, you know, I think we should be clamping down on this. And like I say, I hope it comes into the bottom end of that range. I mean, would you like to see them banned completely? Well, I think it would be sensible to put on a strict limit. I think two pounds is a a good limit. It's a low limit, and I hope it comes out at that end of the spectrum. Um, but I would, I think these machines are different to things like betting on football or horses, where there is some measure of you know personal judgment. This is just literally putting money uh, onto a onto a roulette wheel at a huge uh, rate. You, know, you can literally lose hundreds of pounds but, in a matter of minutes. We see the counter to that is first of all, betting shops say they depend on them, and thousands of jobs will be lost and betting shots will close on high streets. Well, I think that's a poor argument. If something is clearly socially damaging, and I think at the £100 bet limit, these are socially damaging, yeah, it's no argument... Of jobs going well, I think it's no damaged. argument to say that um, you know, you should, we should allow something to happen which is deeply socially and personally damaging um, for purely economic reasons. And if you look at the wider, the cost of that wider social damage, I think there's a very strong case you can make that actually um, it ends up costing our economy money. Ray's pub, Philip Blond at Ray's Publica wrote a very good paper analysing this, and he makes that case quite strongly. The other thing, of course, is that if people are stupid enough to do it, uh, <coughs> the Treasury gets a big rake-off from all this, so we all lose out because there's less tax revenue. Well, as I said, I think there are two sides to the equation. One is the tax revenue, but the other side is the cost of the social damage. And when you weigh up both sides of the equation, I, I'm not sure it comes out positive. But even if it did, and I'm not sure I accept it does, but even if it did, um, you know, there is, we shouldn't mm. say we're willing to accept social damage in order for a little bit extra well, tax Well, we do, revenue. for example, with smoking. I mean, smokers say they contribute much more in taxes than they cost the, the National Health Service, for example. Well, again, I think there's a, there's a difference between p literally pouring money into these machines um, versus someone smoking, you know, cigarettes over the course of a day. Um, the, the putting money into the machine is, it's as addictive, people, some people suggest, it's as addictive neurologically as, you know, crack cocaine or heroin. The neurological effects in the brain, um, the dopamine release, are quite similar. Uh, so I think it is damaging and it, I think it's right the government is moving to limit the way these machines operate. Yeah, how many people do you think now are getting addicted or uh, losing effectively their, their, their way of life because of these machines? Well, you see a range of figures, and I, I would commend Race Publica's report in this area, but it runs into tens of thousands. It's a, it's a problem on a significant scale. And if you look at where these fixed odds betting terminals are located, they tend to be in areas which are more socially deprived. So it's people who are least able to afford to incur these gigantic losses that end up getting hit, and that is the social tragedy of it. Do you think we need other curbs on betting shops? I mean, for example, betting shops tend to cluster now, so you, it's in the same high street, mm. you may have uh, you know, four or even five betting shops, each with four of these terminals. That's right, well, each one has a maximum of four, and one of the reasons why you get multiple betting shops on one high street is that each of them have the maximum of four terminals. Um, so they're, they're having multiple shops to maximise the number of these terminals on any one high street. Um, one other area the consultation is looking at, I think, is advertising. Um, and you know, we've heard, seen some press coverage recently about you know, things that appear to appeal to children being used online. Um, we've heard about uh, gambling adverts being used before the watershed. I do think we need to certainly limit the, or uh, completely prohibit the exposure that children have to gambling adverts, because particularly now you've got you know phones and access to parents' phones, um, it's not as difficult as it once was for people under the age of 18 to get drawn into this. Uh, so that is an area of particular concern as well. But to be clear, if the government comes back and says £50, you're going to say not enough? I'd be very, very disappointed uh, if that's where we end up, and I will be responding to the consultation myself, advocating for £2. Thank you very much indeed, Chris Philp there.